Hello, everyone. We will be waiting a moment here for everyone to join. Um, I want to remind everybody that if you have questions throughout the presentation, please submit them via the Q&A box. We will go through at the end and answer as many as we can while the time allows, and we will reach out with answers to all questions at the conclusion of the webinar. So let's get started. Thank you all for joining today. My name is Corey Smith. I'm a technical sales specialist here at TriLink, and I'll be your moderator today. Today's presenter will be Taylor McReynolds, one of our senior technical sales specialists, and we are here to discuss the emerging applications of mRNA in the therapeutic landscape. Thank you very much, Corey, for that introduction. Uh, like I said, uh, or like Corey said, my name is Taylor McReynolds, and I'm a senior technical sales specialist at TriLink, and I'll be your presenter today. Um, as Corey mentioned, please remember to submit any questions you may have during the uh, during the uh, presentation into the question box in the WebEx panel. First, I'll be discussing a little bit of background on mRNA and TriLink. So it was demonstrated first in the 90s that mRNA could potentially uh, have applications for therapeutics. mRNA has been shown to be an effective method for delivery of genetic information in a variety of applications, including gene editing, cell therapy, vaccines, and more. As you may know, the pandemic has driven increased interest in mRNA as a vaccine platform. TriLink can support both established and new cutting edge mRNA applications. There are some challenges in making mRNA therapeutics, including mRNA optimization, trans uh, transitioning an idea from the lab into the clinic, <coughs> scaling up your production, and using specialized reagents. Uh, TriLink has experience with uh, all of these challenges and offers services from RUO through GMP, which enables you to stay with the same provider through the entire program. And we are constantly scaling up our capacity and improving our processes. TriLink uh, Biotechnologies can offer all of your nucleic acid needs, both catalog and custom. We offer oligonucleotides, NTPs, mRNA, and we'll soon be offering plasmid services in Q1 of next year. We also have a GMP facility and experience manufacturing uh, all of these products for clinical trials. TriLink also has a state-of-the-art facility that we moved into at the start of 2020. Um, it's designed uh, specifically for custom manufacturing and has ISO class seven and ISO class eight GMP suites with a class five fill finish hood. Um, today I'll, I'll be discussing uh, several cutting edge and exciting mRNA applications um, and TriLink can help you uh, with all of your manufacturing needs with these products. First I will be uh, talking about the novel gene editing platforms base editor and prime editor. Base Editor is a new genome editing technology that uses aspects of the CRISPR-Cas9 system, um, but it has a tethered uh, deaminase that allows for precision editing of a single DNA base to another. Uh, there are adenine base editors that convert uh, AT base pairs to GC, and cytidine base editors that convert CG base pairs to TA. Uh, this technology can be very useful uh, because 61% of human uh, pathogenic single nucleotide polymorphisms are accessible uh, using base editors, um, either by the adenine base editor or the cytidine base editor combined. Um, using mRNA for gene editing applications is unique in that it, uh, mRNA expresses transiently. Um, so there's not continued expression, which can reduce the off-target effects that uh, can often be seen with, uh, you know, other methods of um, gene editing. So here's a kind of a general overview of how the base editing process works. Um, a Cas9 NICase and a guide RNA direct the base editor to the desired editing site. The deaminase converts the targeted uh, 
converts the target base, and then the Cas9 nickase uh, nicks the opposite strand to induce repair of the target strand. Uh, DNA repair mechanisms then repair the nick strand with the new appropriate base. Um, so now I'll talk a little bit about Prime Editor. Um, so Prime Editor is known uh, colloquially as the search and replace genome editor. Uh, it is also uh, it's also based on the Cas9 system, but Prime editors have a tethered reverse transcriptase. Um, in uh, Prime editing, you use what's called a Prime editing guide RNA or PEG RNA, which encodes for both the guide RNA like in a traditional CRISPR system, but also contains the desired edit uh, and acts with, that acts as the reverse transcription template. Uh, this leads to more editing possibilities than base editors with similar specificity and lack of double-stranded breaks. Um, here you can see the prime editing process. Uh, first, the PEG RNA binds to the target sequence and the Cas9 nickase um, makes the, the single-stranded break. Uh, hybridization then occurs and the tethered reverse transcriptase uses the template to initiate reverse transcription. The result is DNA polymerization using the, um, using the prime editing guide RNA template. Um, so Trilink can support your, your needs for uh, base editor and prime editor. Uh, we offer custom mRNA, custom guide RNAs. We can make the prime editing guide RNAs. Uh, and um, we also offer CleanCap, uh, which is um, ideal for mRNA manufacturing. We uh, offer modified NTPs for manufacturing mRNA. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll soon be offering plasma manufacturing. Uh, so moving on, I'll now speak a little bit about riboswitches. A riboswitch is a regulatory element of an mRNA that allows for regulation of the mRNA's expression. So synthetic bio biology allows researchers to design feedback circuits and programmable cells. Uh, controlling mRNA expression can be um, very desirable for uh, making an mRNA therapeutic, and uh, an mRNA with a riboswitch incorporated can offer a way for the mRNA to self-regulate uh, its translation and expression. So uh, a little bit more about riboswitches. Uh, they were first discovered in bacteria in 2002, and they are essentially genetic switches. They're typically located in um, the five prime uh, untranslated region or UTR of an mRNA. Um, and how it works is uh, there's ligand binding that results in a conformational change of the mRNA, which uh, regulates the mRNA expression. Um, these binding domains or aptamers can bind to a variety of different molecules such as DNA, RNA, proteins, small molecules, and more. Um, so riboswitches, uh, one interesting application for them is that they're currently being developed for use in uh, next generation cell therapies. This will allow for pre precise control of expression of the genes used to make cell therapies, which helps to avoid uh, overexpression and um, this can potentially lead to a better safety profile for the cell therapies. And again, Trilink can support uh, with our custom manufacturing uh, any of your riboswitch needs. Um, uh, with our mRNA manufacturing, our NTP manufacturing, and our uh, soon to come plasmid manufacturing. The final topic I will be discussing uh, today is mRNA for use in vaccines and in particular, mRNA vaccines in response to a pandemic. mRNA vaccines are unique in that they actually use the host's own cellular uh, uh, machinery to make the antigen. Um, 
multiple org organizations that are uh, at the forefront of the COVID-19 vaccine uh, development are using mRNA. These include, uh, you know, some of the ones you've heard, Moderna, Pfizer and BioNTech, uh, CureVac and Imperial College London. So mRNA vaccines are actually uh, an ideal platform for a pandemic response uh, because they allow for rapid manufacturing and a scalable manufacturing process that does not require uh, cells, eggs, and it offers a um, standardized platform for vaccine development. Other than some of the front runners I mentioned, uh, there's about 30 potential mRNA vaccines being developed for COVID-19 and many more for other diseases. So even though uh, mRNA vaccines are a relatively new idea, there's a new version uh, of mRNA vaccines called self-amplifying self mRNAs or SAMs. Um, so SAMs are uh, derived from uh, viral backbones such as alpha virus, um, specifically uh, Venezuelan equine encephalitis is one that um, is often used. And these mRNAs have built-in machinery that help them self-replicate uh, within the cell, resulting in higher expression of an antigen with a lower dose. Um, this is what uh, essentially a SAM vaccine looks like. Um, they're an RNA encapsulated uh, within a lipid nanoparticle or LNP. At the top, you can see uh, the genomic RNA, this positive uh, strand capped RNA with the poly A tail. Again, the non structural proteins still exist. At, and these are uh, forming the RNA dependent RNA polymerase that is going to replicate this RNA. Uh, in place of the structural genes of you know, the alpha virus, um, you, you place an antigen of interest. Uh, you know, in the case of um, uh, today's world, it, it would be COVID, uh, the spike protein. Uh, this RNA is then replicated by the RNA dependent RNA polymerase into a negative strand RNA. And this, uh, in turn, is replicated again to produce more of that positive strand uh, RNA, as well as the subgenomic RNA that is producing the antigen. Uh, the double-stranded RNA intermediate is recognized by the innate, innate immune system as a pathogen, uh, and so it actually stimulates uh, pattern recognition receptors such as PKR, MBA5, and RIG-I. Um, this second response, which is called, uh, you know, a danger response, lets the cell know that there's some pathogen within it, enhancing both the innate and adaptive arms of the immune system, um, which you know, with this immune stimulation, it achieves a really, really potent uh, vaccination. Um, so in developing a new SAM vaccine uh, in response to a pandemic, you would take the circulated, um, the circulating strand of a virus that has um, been sequenced, uh, like in this case, uh, the, the sequence that was um, uh, derived from China of COVID-19. You transfer that and do gene synthesis into uh, your plasmid vector, and then you produce a self-amplifying RNA uh, via in vitro transcription off of that plasmid DNA template. This is, uh, this is then injected into a patient and that small number of RNAs replicates within the patient, uh, simulating a viral infection, but also producing um, an antibody epitope that is desired for your particular uh, vaccination. Because of that, you require very small doses um, because the vector amplifies once it's inside the cell and you get high amounts of this expressing RNA within your cell. Um, so mRNA vaccines uh, can be developed very quickly, um, in days or months instead of years. Uh, here you can see a case study um, with one of Trilink's clients, Imperial College London, who is using self-amplifying mRNA uh, for their COVID vaccine platform. Um, this is a bit of an accelerated timeline due to the pandemic. But you can see here that we completed GMP manufacturing 
within 22 days of being contacted by the client for uh, GMP manufacturing. So using Trilink's clean cap uh, technology can help accelerate your uh, mRNA vaccine development even more. Um, clean cap is co-transcriptional, uh, meaning that you uh, cap the mRNA during the transcription reaction. So it reduces the amount of manufacturing steps uh, while still maintaining a high, a, a very high degree of capping and um, high yields. Uh, in fact, you actually get about three times the yield of capped material compared to traditional co-transcriptional methods. And you eliminate um, the steps uh, needed to do enzymatic capping of mRNA. So again, uh, Trilink can support uh, mRNA vaccine programs. So uh, we offer custom mRNA manufacturing from research grade through GMP. Um, we will also soon be offering the uh, plasma manufacturing for your, for your vaccine programs as well. Um, we offer CleanCap AG, uh, which is ideal for uh, your standard mRNA uh, manufacturing, and we offer CleanCap AU, which is um, ideal for use in self-amplifying mRNAs. So, um, in conclusion, uh, what I what I went over today are just a few of the emerging applications of mRNA, and um, there are many more. Trilink is a leader in uh, mRNA manufacturing with unparalleled expertise. We can supply all your mRNA needs uh, from research to uh, GMP grade manufacturing. Trilink continues to expand its CDMO and GMP production capabilities to support, uh, to support diverse mRNA programs um, from discovery through early clinical needs. And uh, with that, um, we will wrap up the presentation. Uh, feel free to contact uh, our team. You can see our contact information uh, here on this slide uh, with any of your questions or if you're interested in, in getting some mRNA manufactured. And with that, I thank you all for attending. Uh, please submit any questions you have in the question panel. Thanks, Taylor. That was very informative. I just want to inform everybody that we will be uploading a recording of this session to our website. If anybody wants to revisit some of the topics that were covered today, um, it will be available shortly. So let's get to some of your questions. Okay. The first question we received, in what ways is using mRNA better for gene editing than other types of vectors? Taylor? Yeah, so um, M mRNA uh, is better in a, in a couple different ways. Um, one, it offers um, transient expression, uh, which, you, you know, it, it only expresses for a uh, short period of time, whereas, you know, um, viral or plasmid vectors can um, can express for longer and this shorter period of expression um, leads to fewer off-target effects and um, additionally compared to other vectors mRNA can't uh, will not integrate into the genome and mRNA also um, targets the cyto cytoplasm um, to be expressed rather than the nucleus so it, it um, is is um, a bit easier to get expression. Great, thank you. The next one we received, what is the maximum length of, of that you can make for an mRNA transcript? Um, so I, I, in theory, we don't necessarily have um, a, a maximum. Um, we, we've made mRNAs that are up to uh, you know, between 10 to 15,000 uh, nucleotides long. And um, all, to build on that, stabil stability does become an issue at these larger sizes, but um, Trilink does have a lot of experiences 
uh, with avoiding these issues. Great. Uh, the next question, you mentioned that plasmid services may be coming online. Do you have a date for that? Um, I don't know if we have an official date, but the goal is to begin offering this uh, in Q Q1 of 2021. Okay. The next, is there any intellectual property constraints when ordering mRNA from TriLink? So um, TriLink's clean cap technology is patented, yes, but um, we would only require a one-time licensing fee, and that would be at the time of commercialization of your product. So it wouldn't actually um, have to uh, be due until you, uh, the, the product is commercialized. Okay, and one more here. What are some of the most common base modifications used to minimize innate immune stimulation in uh, base editing mRNA? Um, so some of the common uh, base modifications um, are uh, substitutions of different uridine analogs, including uh, 5-methoxyuridine, uh, pseudouridine, and N1-methyl pseudouridine. Uh, actually, all of uh, Trilink's catalog mRNAs have a 5-methoxyuridine uh, substitution as an option, um, and it, you know, it, it works very well. And uh, but I, I will note that um, different uh, cell types, different cell lines, different experimental conditions, um, uh, it might uh, different modifications might work better in those different systems. Sure. Okay, here's one more. Um, do self-amplifying mRNA vaccines ever produce too much mRNA to the point where it may become lethal uh, to the cell itself? Um, so that, that's a good question. Um, I don't believe so. Um, you know, even though they, uh, they are self-amplifying, the, they'll, the, expression will still be transient to an extent. And, um, you know, you're starting with much lower doses than you would a standard mRNA. Uh, so um, it, it, it shouldn't become lethal to the cell, but uh, I, I can follow up on that question as well um, to, to get a little bit more detail. Sure. What? Here's, here's one more. What is the duration of expression of Trilink manufactured mRNA uh, when you inject into an in vivo model such as a mouse? So uh, for, for in vivo, that, that's, um, uh, that's a good question that, that I'll, I'll need to follow up on a, a little bit more. Um, I know for in, in vitro, um, mRNAs typically express for about, um, peak expression is typically seen around 12 to 18 hours um, and can decline pretty quickly after that. Um, and uh, um, so the um, uh, uh, but for in vitro or for in vivo, I'm, I'm not sure if that if that is um, exactly the same amount of time. Um, but I can follow up on that. Okay, we have we have one more here. What is the the common technology that you use for purification of your mRNA when using clean cap? Um, so that that's a good question as well. Um, so our standard uh, purification for you know small scale kind of research grade um, material is. Um, silica membrane uh, purification, which, you know, removes, uh, you know, residual plasma DNA, NTPs, um, proteins, uh, you know, short, short strands of RNA. So um, it, it does a pretty good job of removing that. Um, 
as we get to a larger scale, we we do um, more of uh, it, it's kind of an equivalent in the quality of purification, but uh, we uh, move into more of a diafiltration process. Thanks, Taylor. I think that's about all of the the questions we received here. Um, I just want to. I guess thank everybody for joining. I know we uh, put our emails up there for a second, but if you would, if you have any more questions, please contact sales at trialingbiotech.com. Or if you know, if you want to reach either Taylor or myself personally, we have our emails up there as well. But we want to thank you guys for joining. Um, please visit our website as well if you have any other questions. And um, I think we're going to end it here. Thanks so much, Corey. Thanks everyone for attending. Have a nice day.